What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross, back at again with another video. So, I proposed a very interesting question on Twitter after everything had went down at the WrestleMania kickoff uh, press conference between The Rock, Roman, and Cody. The question I asked was, do you guys feel like this was a complete work by WWE, or do you guys feel like it was an audible because of the backlash that The Rock was receiving? Or do you guys feel like it was a combination of both? Now, let's look at it from a work standpoint. Say, for example, this was all a big work. This was all a ploy to kind of freshen up the main event for Cody versus Roman. As I said in my previous video, them doing the same thing they did last year with Cody versus Roman, Cody trying to finish his story again, I don't think fans were going to really, I guess, be that excited for it. I know fans were, you know, looking forward to Cody finally finishing his story, but they had to add something to spice it up, to make things that much more interesting leading into WrestleMania. Insert The Rock. If you guys remember last week's promo on SmackDown, he had counsel with The Rock. He was the one that brought The Rock in to potentially take everything from Roman. And what I guess you could say the rumor has been circulating now, and this is just speculation, people fantasy booking, which I do like the idea potentially. If this is all a work, then it would make sense just a bit to throw Roman off, to throw him off in a sense of, okay, me, Cody, and The Rock are secretly working together because Cody knows him going into WrestleMania the same way he did last year, it's not going to help him his case. He knows he's not going to be able to win the match by himself. And what better way to take down Roman from within the bloodline, from someone that is actually part of his family tree? What better way to systematically destroy them one by one by setting up this whole situation where maybe, you know, The Rock is is starting to kind of push his weight around and show why he's really the head of the table and he doesn't need a championship for that. And Cody is kind of, you know, sent him over there. Not as in as a spy, but more or less acting it up. They're working Roman in a sense. This whole situation at the press conference, him now the rock aligning himself with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, you know, kind of looking like, you know, He's like, you know, siding with The Rock. They have a common enemy in Cody Rose disrespecting their family. And little does Roman know, Rock is out here. He's going to try to essentially take over, potentially. Maybe convert Solo. You know, Solo starts listening to him more. Jimmy starts listening to him more. You know, and, and that could potentially cause a wedge between Roman and The Rock, ultimately leading at WrestleMania um, the Rock turning on Roman may in a sense of he's stopping Solo and Jimmy from getting involved in the match, the main event match with pitches, pisses off Roman, distracts him enough where Cody could get the win there. And then it comes out that this was the plan all along. This was the plan for me to get the Rock to help me stop you once and for all. We had to, you know, get a little dirty in the midst of it to really get you to believe that the rock was on your side only to let you know he was never on your side you can do something like that that would destroy roman character wise to the point where he has a mental breakdown and he doesn't trust anybody and it gets out of hand he will do whatever he can to get his hands on roman reigns so that can be a situation you know you could you could do something like that um, to kind of really play up the fact that this was all a big ruse, all a big work to get everybody roused up. So that can be an idea. Now, the idea that may sounds the sound, I guess you say, sounds the more plausible would be WWE calling an audible. I think, and what we just can see just on what we saw on television, when The Rock came out there, Cody kind of stepped aside. When The Rock came out there, he didn't even say nothing. All we heard was Cody said, 
I'm not going to take the title from you at this year's WrestleMania. It's, it's going to be some other time. He just said, I'm going to take the title from you, just not at WrestleMania. Only for them days later to be like, you know what, I'm taking the title from you now. I think it was to see the fans' reaction. The fans in the arena went crazy, but the social media reaction was the complete opposite. It's been a minute since I've seen so many people back one person up. The last time I can think of it, obviously, Daniel Bryan um, being inserted into the main event of WrestleMania 30 that year because it was going to end up being Batista versus um, Randy Orton for the main event, which no one wanted. Legends in their own right, but no one wanted to see that. It was only about the Daniel Bryan yes movement, and I think this was the same thing. We want Cody... It, it just blew up. It made Cody the bigger star. He's bigger now than he was last year. I think probably this is the most hype I've ever seen for Cody, bro. He's the biggest star right now because of what happened with The Rock and Roman. And that backlash was so real and so strong over social media that there was no way they could ignore it. There was no way they can ignore it. And it translated on the television and it's been translating on the television i was one of them skeptics that was like maybe this is just a youtube wrestling like an, not youtube but internet wrestling trend like maybe it'll just die out you know maybe a couple days or whatnot i don't think it's going to translate on television no i was wrong every event that they've had since that friday night smackdown anytime the rock has been mentioned he's been booed he gets cheers, but he gets a lot more booze, and we haven't seen that in a while. Then The Rock goes out there on Pat McAfee's show, and he he heals it up. He goes at some of the other Cody fans, the Cody crybabies, as he calls it, and heals it up. Even at this press conference, he played into it. They were booing this guy loudly, and he played into it, and he went the route of, you know what? I'm one of the board members on TKO. My family lineage is the best lineage in wrestling history. We can do whatever we want to do. Let's go this route. And I think that's where they most likely had to call an audible. Even with Roman Reigns saying, you know what? You had your opportunity to choose. You stepped aside, essentially, for The Rock. So I'm going to choose The Rock. I've already faced you, already beaten you. You stepped aside. You you brought him into the mix, so I'm going to do this. And they're basically on this tandem of we are the bloodline. We are the premier wrestling family, the only family that really matters. So this is the main event we want. We don't care about what the fans want. We want this. And I think they called an audible. Now, that we still have plenty of time to WrestleMania, so things are things can change between Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania. We will see how it plays out. But I do feel like the audible side of things, I think that's very plausible. And I, I feel like sometimes in wrestling, you do have to call an audible. I wish Vince McMahon, when he was in the company, called a lot more audibles. We probably would have gotten better stories and better uh, feuds and championship runs if he would have called an audible. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, sometimes it's cool to stay the course, but sometimes you may not be able to stay the course. And this is one of them situations where I think the WrestleMania crowd would have definitely voiced their opinions potentially if, and we still don't know yet, even though the graphic says Roman versus Cody, we, I'm, I'm, I got to, I still, there's a, still that small part of me that still believes they can switch it up at any moment. So, but right now that's the official match for main eventing uh, WrestleMania night two this year. But say this was the plan. They just wanted to test the waters with The Rock and Roman, and they heard the backlash. They was like, all right, we may have to switch it up, which is kudos to WWE for actually listening to their fans for the, you know, they don't really do it too often, but kudos to them. So that could be another option. Uh, I'm leaning more towards the audible side. It makes a little bit sense, but... There's one more other option, work and an audible, combining them both, a combination of sorts. I do think the audible came after SmackDown and after they seen 
the backlash. I do think the Audible kind of, I guess you could say, appeared thin. They're like, all right, we may have to adjust courses here. We may have to switch some things up. But they can implement it as a work. And what I mean by that is they can make this seem like like what, what I originally said, that this was all part of Cody's plan. Is it convoluted? For sure it is. It, it still doesn't make sense why Cody would try to psych the rock out to think he's going to do this one thing only to try to get them to get, you know, have a common goal in hating him. It's really convoluted. A lot of factors have to go into play, but that's the only thing I can see them trying to do to make it seem as if this was all really part of their plan. We don't really know, but that would be the only other way you can make it seem as if it was a work, but also you called an audible because you heard how the fans were reacting. And some people can say it may have been a combination of both, you know, but that's really up for you to kind of decide in your head, Canon. So I don't know. Me personally, I'm leaning more towards this was most likely, uh, likely an audible. They can turn it into a work. They can turn it into a story angle if they need an out. And this is what we're going to find out on SmackDown and why this is working. Because people are going to tune into SmackDown and see what does Cody has to say. Why did you initially want to step aside? Now, if it's part of his master plan, then he's not going to say why he did it. He's going to leave hints and clues. And it's going to be very interesting to what, what he says tonight. I'm, I'm going to be listening very closely to his wording. What he says and how he words it will let me know if it was an audible or if this was more or less a storyline situation or a combination of both. So y'all comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys feel like this was a work? Do you guys feel like this was an audible? Or do you guys feel like this was a combination of both to kind of fool the fans, but also they're listening to the fans and they had to switch stuff up? So let me know how y'all feel about this down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. Speed the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping it with me. See you on the next one. Peace.